We're rolling. Me or him? I you, don't you, know. you go. It's important to you. You do it. <laughs> so I don't care. All right. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to episode number of. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good start. <laughs> what episode is this? Five. Okay. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to episode five of the World's Drift podcast from Bossa Studios. My name is Monster, and I'm not the host of this episode. <laughs> Joining me is Julia <laughs> and Malford. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hi there, guys. Do? It's me, Malford. <laughs> Hi, it's Julia. See, I bet you couldn't even tell that it wasn't me doing the intro. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> Get ahead, people. Um... Hi, Monster. Hey. What's happening? What's popping? Welcome. Well, yeah, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Officially. You were sitting in the background of the first episode. They don't know that. Yeah, they now do. They I mentioned it in the notes. Okay. Bit of movie magic for you guys oh, at home. Right. This is a movie now. This is a film. <laughs> it's it's an audio film. <laughs> an audio um, film. That's what we're calling them from now onwards. Um, so, Monster, what do you do here? Uh, well, first, uh, my name is Monster. Mm-hmm. And that is his name. that's um, similar to Malford. We're both similar. Matts. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, we look so similar and sound so similar that people get us. Confused. Yeah, you can't tell. It's pretty much the <laughs> it's same. It's going to be a very difficult podcast for you guys at home because you're just going to hear the same voice uh, over and over again. Now, you, you may be able to, if you're sort of an expert linguist, uh, pick out a slight. A slight difference in our accent. He's the American version of me. Right. And I like to test out my American accent yeah. when I'm on podcasts. See, I'm always pretending to do an English accent because I, you know, I've, I've lived here for, you think for you're a bit. posh. I, I want to sound posh. I want to sound like I'm from the sort of quite quite a uh, very specific part of Surrey uh, and from a very specific sort of uh, social background. Um, not as posh as Ryan, though. Not as posh as Ryan. Well, Ryan isn't from the specific part of Surrey that I'm from. He is a beautiful Japanese. He's a woman. beautiful. Well, he is. He's a willowy. <laughs> <Frail. a> willowy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did that answer your question of what I do? I am a I am the systems designer for Worlds Adrift. Although these days I'm just kind of general game designer. We've been picking up and putting down anything that we find on this project right now. We're trying to get as much good stuff in as we can. Did you find and, a lot of things? Oh my god, we have so much good stuff coming in. <laughs> awesome. In fact, I think that's what we're here to talk to, oh about today. Oh my god, isn't it? is it? Yeah, it might be. How is that transition? That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's almost a good transition, except for the first point on the news is about. Update 26, which is not the new stuff that oh, it's, talk it's about. new to them. New to them. It's, yeah. Hey, it's some pretty good stuff in 26. I mean, it, yeah. Uh, well, f- jumping back, though. Oh. First of all, okay, let's yeah. ask Monster what was the first thing that you did on Worlds Adrift? Ah, um, I introduced myself. And we're out to lunch. It's a good. Uh, it's a good. <laughs> Didn't the first thing you did was come to Oh, yeah. Actually, the real first thing I did, but a week before I started, I yeah. showed up in an offsite and everybody was talking about how we can make the game better. And I was like, I don't know anything. Yeah. And there was free food. So there was. It was yeah. a great day. Yeah, yeah, there wasn't much food, though. It was like finger food. And yeah. it was kind of sad. Yeah. I had I'm so time, sorry but... that the free food wasn't to your standards. No, here. it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, my first task on the game, uh, working on Worlds Adrift, was to implement or to design the overheat system, um, which was a, an incredible way to get to know all the systems in our game. Which it turns out there are many, and they are all uh, interwoven like some game of pickup sticks or uh, spaghetti that has just been boiled and thrown at the wall. Um, <laughs> just some great metaphors. Thanks. Yeah. It's my British upbringing. Uh-huh. Um, I. Was able to design the system and came up with some numbers for it and all that stuff. It obviously has not been implemented yet. It's not in the game. Obviously. Um, there's when is we, it scheduled for? Ooh, I wish I could tell you that. Oh, um, cool. We are we are thinking about very soon. Um, awesome. It's something that we really want to get into the game and uh, try and eliminate some of those stats that we have in there that are just currently not as valuable or straight up not working. Yeah. You know, early access being what it is, sometimes we just don't have everything that works in the game. We just we plan ahead, add it to the UI, and then see what happens. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we all know that, you know, you've got some really great engines that have four or five stats, um, and only one of them is really useful. <laughs> so Wait. <laughs> it's the wait is the yeah. important part. Yeah. So you've really got to, uh, yeah, that's sort of your, your key sort of thrust why we brought you in, isn't it, to... Take advantage of all the systems. Did you and say build thrust? It. Thrust. As in, like, the thrust from an engine? No, it's but... beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful. I mean, I was yeah. going to make it's a, an excellent accidental pun. Uh, I was going to make a pun about the fact that it was trial by fire. Uh, <laughs> uh, overheat, fire's hot, I guess. Very good, hot things. Um, 
Uh, so that was my first task, and hopefully that's coming in soon. Um, since then, we've been working hard at 26, 27, yep. and with 26, we introduced alliances. Woo! Uh, yeah. Long time coming. Yeah. Hope you guys are enjoying them, and uh, we'll, you, I'm sure you'll give us some feedback, because they just released yesterday, which was the 6th of September. Mm -hmm. What year are we in? <laughs> um, I think that sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 2015. So we're waiting for some... <laughs> That's incorrect. <laughs> For those of you listening at home thinking that we recorded this three years ago, don't, don't do that. Listen, we've just been sitting on this speech for three years. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be too far from the uh, truth. Hey! No, don't say that to you. It is, it is not true. Um, no, it's been two months. Yeah. Um, so... I forgot what I was saying. Well, a lot of the about. a lot of the things that uh, that we did for the uh, alliances that made it take so long was just that it's it's a it, a lot of it is the back end stuff. Um, so it's you know hopefully now that we've established that there's this new sort of uh, supported part of the game that we can now use that to you know make things a bit more flashy and a bit more exciting and fully featured for future updates. Because you know at the moment the alliance stuff is is uh, it, it, there's a huge amount of work that went into putting it in, and I'm super super proud of all the people who worked on it. Uh, but from a, a user perspective, you know there's not a huge amount to do there. It's just sort of you know you can make your alliance, you can join your alliance, and you can talk to your friends, which is I disagree. For a social game, it's yeah. a pretty big. I mean, I would say that that is all crucial things it needs, <laughs> but you know it doesn't have a lot of the stuff that you might have in in some other MMOs, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We are getting a lot of uh, additional things that are currently being tested. In for 27, which mm. will add to the social features, such as muting people. That's important. <laughs> That's an important feature yes. in our game. Um, but yes, uh, right now it's it's out in the wild, and we want your um, feedback on it, and we hope you're enjoying it. Because our, now you can chat. Our community is amazing. <laughs> At giving feedback, I'm sure. Yes, they yes, they have, are. They will have They're very so much passionate to say, about great. giving feedback, and we love them for it. Yeah, because it makes our job easier, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. it helps Cheers, us. Guys. Helps us make a better game for them. Yeah. Yar. TM. TM. Trademark pending. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do want to talk a little bit about. Uh, Update 27 as well, though. Um, yes. Now, obviously, in a podcast I did with Luke a little while ago, we went through all of the features that we had confirmed for 27, and we're still working on getting everything sort of QA'd and ready to go. But um, we want to focus a little bit on one particular part of uh, Update 27 today and talk a little bit about cooking. <laughs> we're all very passionate about cooking. Yeah. I yeah. mean, food is kind of important. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've, you've picked up on it from Muster, from the fact that, I'd say about 30% of what he said to introduce himself was about food. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I'm yeah. very large, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> he's, he's a passionate guy. Um, yeah. Pa passionate about food. I um, am, and I, that's why I'm so excited for our new cooking feature. Um, yeah. We even have, I actually really do love cooking, as uh -huh. a bit of a side note. Uh, one of my favorite things is to watch some of our great national treasures like Jamie Oliver uh -huh. and Gordon Ramsay. So yeah. if you're great national treasures. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We keep yeah. coming back to this, Malcolm. Yeah. I am British. My obviously favorite chef is the American national treasure, Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> The best chef of all time. Uh, unfortunately, yes. Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives has not made its way to Worlds Adrift yet, but <laughs> yeah. potentially that's will, in a future soon, update. It will, because yeah. uh, let's face it, the whole point of the cooking update is that Luke To get Guy Fieri times. Yes, yes, so we'll get, absolutely. We have a free Guy Fieri cookbooks. Um, Luke, being a massive fan of Guy Fieri, <laughs> wanted to start up like more uh, Diners and Dives around yeah. Worlds. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, let's throw him under that bus. I mean, I like that. That, was the, <laughs> that was actually the original inspiration for Worlds Adrift. <laughs> If we can get Guy Fieri to tweet at us, uh -huh. I will frost my tips and get the same <laughs> haircut as he has. I swear to God. Okay. Well, at me. So, okay, guys at home, uh, that's your mission. Uh, if you can tweet Guy Fieri, get him to listen to this podcast, then uh, you get to see Muster with frosted tips. I will. I will send. I will DM you pics. <laughs> and oh. he is a man of his word because oh last hair. time when he was on stream, he went and called one of you community members. He did. He did at work. Oh, that was good. Yeah. That was fun. I, I forget that that man's real name um we had a lovely little conversation if you're out there listening dm me <laughs> Slide in i got dms, DMs. open must they're open now okay great um but anyway cooking yeah. is a great new feature of the game we added this new ship part uh, julie have you seen the stove 
I have seen the stove. It looks mm -hmm. amazing, and it looks like something that I would actually want in my house because it's because it, yeah, it's very it's, rustic. Isn't it's it? very rustic. Oh, we absolutely, love rustic. It's so good. Yeah. Definitely a fire hazard. But Definitely. outside of that, it, it looks fantastic. I mean, if you have a wooden ship, we haven't yet implemented it setting fire, so your your sims are okay. I'm glad you said <laughs> yes, so that we can just do that at some point. Yeah, at some we point. told you it was coming. <laughs> I actually literally just had a meeting about fire and how it's uh -huh. a cool thing that one day we want. Okay. I mean, That's it. That is as much as I can promise. There are on that certain feature. people in the studio who always want to add fire to all of our games. So, uh, yeah. In fact, there's a. I'll a, join their horde. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a prototype game that I made, which uh, I, I don't want to talk too much about in case we do something with it one day, but um, it's, it's broadly about um, going to parties. And the amount of times that specific people in this office have suggested that we make it so that you can set yourself on fire at the parties. Um, I, it is, it's, it's more than you'd think. And you might think it's a lot, but it's more than that even. you think they would just give up and say uncle already, but they... Uh, uh, <laughs> that's an, that's an joke. joke. Yeah. There you go, guys. Um, Someday okay. you'll get it. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, some of the recipes that we've got. Um, one of the interesting things about cooking that we're doing, obviously before there were some basic recipes like cooking steak and that kind of stuff, which would heal you a little bit better than the raw versions of the foods. It's but, berries um, and two types of meat. <laughs> berries and two types of meat. It was a very <laughs> expansive menu. Um, <laughs> but we've added quite a lot of new things. I'm not going to go through everything, but um, there are certain things that those, those foods will do for you, certain bonuses they give you. Again, I'm not going to go through everything, but some of them will, you know... Uh, make you run a bit faster or climb a bit faster or uh, give you some some minor damage uh, prevention stuff so there's you know some um some use some utility to this food but also some of it sounds very delicious to me for example um manta curry ever wanted mm. to curry a manta yeah um atlas manta skewers Mm. Not sure how you eat rocks, yeah. but it does You've got sound to eat some rocks good. with it. Oh, yeah, maybe, absolutely. Maybe it's just going to make you floaty. Spicy <laughs> manta exactly goulash. Goulash. You're about to make a goulash. That's right. Is it goulash? Is it like goulash? Goulash. I don't know. Okay. It's goulash. Uh, it's goulash. Don't yeah. at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exquisite thuntamite stuffed shell. Ooh. That sounds very good, doesn't it? It's a good adjective. Um, slug sauce. Are we getting slugs? We're getting <laughs> slugs. Okay, that's that's tied into the uh, to the to the faction that we the unannounced faction. The subculture that, that isn't goths. That gives you a slight a slight hint. It's uh, slug. What they're like. It's, <laughs> yeah, you make slugs. It's basically slugs and berries, um, and it's Delicious. horrible. Yeah, you've got to cook it. Is it is it a buff or a debuff? Uh, it just heals you a bit. That okay. one's not, there's nothing super special. It builds about character that. too. I mean, if you're really <laughs> yeah, trying to be put some hair on all your you chest. can be exactly, yeah, exactly. You know, maybe down the line we'll make it have some uh, some very small chance of it doing something really strange to you, but I'm not sure. Awesome. We, uh, we established in the law at one point that um, it produces strange acrid fumes, so there must be something going on there in these guffs. Uh, guffs. Yes, that's a little uh, British phrase I've learned. Well, I learned that when I was growing up here. <laughs> yes, I've learned that from you <laughs> since moving here. <laughs> Right. Such a good joke. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Let's keep doing it. Yeah. Uh, what about if you're of age, alcohol? Yes, we're going to have alcohol. That's another thing that's tied into the. Uh, How many alcohols do we have? Do we have my favorite alcohol? We do have your favorite alcohol. Your favorite alcohol is Blood. moonshine, isn't it? Yes, it is. You love moonshine and grog. <laughs> and and the one in between yeah. too. There's the one that you that you you know you might be referencing is is rum, and we are adding rum to the game. Because, it's you know, pretty good too. Yeah, it's a very good. Um, it's a it's a good spread of uh, sort of bandity, piratey alcohols. Question. Yes. Grog. Yes. By recipe. Yes. Includes water. Are we getting water? Uh, <laughs> no, yet. Later. We're not currently working on water. Are we working on something that you could eat that <laughs> might not be good for you? Like. What if I could trick a friend yeah. into eating food that actually hurt them? Yeah. Well, we've got two vegetarian dishes in the game now. I don't mean... <laughs> they hurt you. That's yeah. not what I meant. Well <laughs> one of them is um, a nice mushroom stew. Uh -huh. And the other one looks pretty similar. Uh, but it's a... Uh, they're poisonous mushrooms. Ah. So, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So you can, you can, you know, eat a nice mushroom stew. You can say, would you like a mushroom stew as well? And your friend will say, yes, I'm I would like death. a mushroom Please stew. Please heal me. Yeah. I'm going to die. I need a mushroom stew. Yeah. <laughs> and you can say, here you go. Here's a mushroom stew. But maybe it's poison. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> They'll never know <laughs> until unless they, they die. Read until it. well, until seconds later when they die. Yes. Well, it doesn't kill you in seconds. It's quite a it's a reason. Well, it is seconds actually. Yeah, it's literally seconds. It's literally yeah. seconds. <laughs> it's not. It's not very quick. It's it's if a long. If they're near death already yeah. and they need yeah mushroom stew to stay alive. Yeah, I mean if you if you've lost at least ten health and you don't do anything afterwards, then you will die from it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a deadly, deadly shoot. Get wrecked, it noobs. Looks very similar. So, I mean, you, if you're if you're careful when you read description that kind of stuff, you'll figure it out. Oh, <laughs> uh, that sounds like a lot of good food. It's great food, especially the poison. Especially the poison. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of excited about the fruity rice. Yeah. Fruity rice is good. Sounds yeah. good. Uh, yeah. I love Pineapple some rice. rice. I think. That, I mean, the coolest part of the, uh, you know, outside of being able to live that fantasy of being a chef is uh, the whole. The coolest part of the cooking system is the buffs and the, and the debuffs that come with them. So, jump higher, run faster, that sort of deal. Mm. Um, heal faster. Heal faster. Um, we also we're also getting bandages, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, so bandages are. They're really. essentially they work in the same system, but it's just they apply a certain amount of heating, healing, heating. <laughs> Hot bandages. Um, <laughs> hot, hot, hot bandages. Rest. No, um, they uh, apply uh, a set amount of healing and it's just instant. So it's sort of, you know, it's still healing over time, but that time is instant. It patches you up. It patches you up. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, we'll have that as well. Um, I think uh, that is probably it for, or at least as much as we, as opposed to just going through a list of all the things and what they right, want to do. Right, that's probably enough to share for now. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. so much that they can discover for themselves. Yeah, yeah we don't want to spoil the, the the entire experience for you. Yeah, Otherwise, you want to experiment just... with cooking. I wish yes. I could with play. I wish I could play like they play. That was good. I'm sorry, I was already moving on to the it's next thing, but the Guy Fieri yeah. reference. I'm really, I'm really glad yeah. that we have the passion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> um, I wish I could play like they play because I already know about all this stuff, but they get to discover it for the first time. Well, you know, that's so cool. It is, it is really cool. Uh, but, but like, also, it just absolutely it amazes me what kind of questions they get with the information that we give them. Mm. So, yeah. like the uh, grav boots or mm-hmm. the atlas mm-hmm. boots. What mm-hmm. are they actually called in the end? They are called atlas boots. Yeah. Uh, okay. it, uh, under the hood. Um, I think the actual name for them is Regus. The Gre- Regus Greaves. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. So Regus, Regus is a character. If you've uh, if you've been reading the law, if you've been paying attention to the law, you'll know all about Regus. Uh, Why? What voice is that? This is uh, <laughs> this is the voice of a Regus. man who loves law. <laughs> <laughs> and I am that man. <laughs> So, he also writes that law. Yeah, well, so I've written some of the more recent law. You <laughs> nice. can't see this, but I'm pushing my fake glasses up. As Although, two people who are wearing glasses. Another great audio podcast trick. I'm now putting glasses on <laughs> and pushing them up my nose. And he looks like a douche. <laughs> cool. Is that a swear word? I don't know. I don't it think is. so. It's a cleaning um, product. <laughs> that brings us on to the <laughs> question. About the Regus Greaves. About the Regus Greaves. No, yeah. the, um, from the community. About the Regus Greaves. Yeah, uh-huh. it is. Yes. Well, no, whatever. Um, Lexi, who is a uh, member of the CCC, uh, oh. is asking us on YouTube. Um, if me and my buddy both have grav boots and we put them on, I go upside down and buddy walks onto my boots and we walk at the same time and step on each other's feet. Could we walk in the middle of the air? I love this thought. I love I, it I, so much. I, I, this, is, this is why I love our community. I love this. Um, the answer is unfortunately no, because uh, you can't walk on people. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Oh, we didn't think of that, <laughs> did we? Oh, no. We've ruined it. Uh, you think, can walk on creatures, though. So I, you can hitch a ride on the back of a, a beetle or a, a manta. Just or the underside of a beetle. Yes, you manta. can. I mean, you can't really... Well, I, not advised on the underside of the manta because it will kill you. That is where the dangerous bit is. <laughs> the, the danger underside. zone. The, the underbelly. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Eddie the Pro asks on Twitter... Will player ship rendering distances ever be increased? It's almost impossible to spot players across the same region unless they approach your island. Yeah, it's something we know about. I, I would love to see them increase. It's definitely something we're trying to do in the future. What we need to do first is improve other parts of the performance of the game, and then we can kind of balance that out by increasing draw distances. So, long-winded answer, but yes. Yes, eventually. eventually. We will get there. Soon yeah. TM. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> right. Spino Skulls asks Will you allow the community to make mods and use them? On custom servers. No, no. nope. <laughs> uh, right. Basically, the way that the way that the game works at the moment is it runs entirely on uh, 
this sort of network of supercomputers. Um, so unless you have a network of supercomputers, um, the game would it explode as soon as you try to run it locally with more than about two islands and about two ships. He's not even exaggerating. That's, um, that's a real No, that would happen, yeah. yeah. We have real trouble because we have very powerful computers here in the office. And, and if they... we want to test something locally with anything bigger than a very small island and one small ship, uh, it breaks. So And they literally explode. Yeah. Which is, which is something that we've mentioned previously about why we can't have a localized tutorial zone or like Haven, um, which a lot of people were asking about. Why can't we run it just locally? Yeah. Um, your computer would explode. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like something that was just an island with a player, we could probably run locally. But the problem there is the transition, and there's a ton of other stuff under the hood that the we the other have to worry islands about. and the yeah. other players. Like basically, we'd have to do, we'd have to make an entire sharding system just for that, and we don't have a sharding system at all because it's a huge amount of work, and we've got you know only so many many hands on deck to work on that stuff. It would be, it would be nice one day. To allow for things, you know, like what Minecraft does, where they have all their custom service and whatnot, but that's nowhere in the plan. I, and I don't think I just don't think we'll it's possible with the way that the game is right, structured. Yeah, I just think we'd have to completely sort of remake the game from scratch with a completely different yeah. sort of. It wouldn't be an MMO anymore. Yeah, it's, all these it's, sorts of things. It's not a bad question. It's not a bad no. desire to have. We just can't do it. Yeah. Um, Jay Brads from the forums asks, "Can you talk about the future of shipbuilding?" You can build more ships in the future. <gasps> Are we going to change the... the <laughs> way? That's the That's, future. <laughs> the future is now. Um, you will at some point be able to build asymmetric ships yeah. from what I knew. It's actually of. something we're trying to get in very soon. Yeah, um, We're talking about it anyway. We're, we're trying to figure out what the sort of smaller things we can do because we have a long-term plan, which we've talked about on the podcast before, for um, what we would do you know, to redo the system or to, to really uh, change things up a lot and allow a lot more flexibility. But um, one of the hopefully uh, reasonably simple things we can do is just uh, is, is allow you to build those asymmetric ships. Oof. 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 Anything else? Um, yeah, I mean, new ship parts. We have ideas for all sorts of different oh, yes. stuff. Um, new sales, yeah? Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah, we want to you some... promised me new sales. Did I? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, right. I think On we've stream. been talking about go. new sales for such a long time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm just kidding. We, On stream. We, we do have ideas for new sales, maybe yeah. uh, procedurally generated sales as we have with other uh, schematics for shipbuilding mm. stuff. and mm. A whole bunch of new stats. It's actually something that I'm working on for the material rebalance, which the CCC knows about. And I think most of the community, I've, I've been asking around for assistance on that to get more information about it. And um, one of the things we're looking at is adding new stats to ship parts to make them either replace ones that we don't use right now or make uh, ones that are underutilized more important. So, yeah, you guys, if you have ideas for ship part stats that you think would be interesting, uh, comment on uh, the podcast and let us know. Discord DMs on Twitter. Mm, Not Discord DMs. Don't, don't Discord DMs. Yeah. <laughs> Those get lost very yeah. quickly. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, Russell is asking any future plans uh, about cosmetics for player and ship wise too. I am all about fashion adrift. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. This dude is gonna love twenty seven. I'm sorry, yeah. dude or dudette is gonna love twenty seven. Uh, have we talked about that? Yes, we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You can now dye your clothes. Yeah, twenty seven. You'll be able to uh, make your own clothes and dye them. So you'll be able to, if you find a schematic for clothes, you'll be able to sort of keep remaking them and you'll be able to find a schematic to create dyed cloth, make different kinds of dyed cloth, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you'll have lots of control over that. We also have all the furniture that's going on ships. Um, in the future, we'd like to add more furniture, more cosmetic items, and also things like the ability to uh, customize other parts of your ship, maybe some different sort of versions of things so that you'll be able to really delve in and Make everything look like you want it to. Yeah. Well, we talked about... Get the um, right poop deck. Yeah. Uh, uh, we do have brown <laughs> in the game now. Um, we were talking about, with the inclusion of alliances, being able to dye your ship's uh, colors with them. Of course, that's not something that's going in right now, but it is something that we... Ship. You want what? I want a pink ship. Yeah, well, one day. Um, <laughs> that is definitely something that we want to add. It's something that we'll look into doing, but obviously there are more pressing matters to, it, to attend ships. to. ships. We have to get our game, you know, floating, uh, being adrift. Being adrift and yeah. not falling off your ship are also things that we're working on. Yeah. Um, are there any plans for housing? I'm assuming Brian Pace is talking about stationary on-island mm. housing. There are no plans for 
on land housing. We have obviously in update 27, there's the ability to make your ship more homely. Um, so you'll be able to use furniture to do that. We need to have uh, rugs. Rugs, okay. I'll put that on the list. <laughs> we, have, we have cloth. We have cloth. Actually, we're soon to be adding a crafting station that would allow for rugs to be built as well. That's an interesting okay. idea. Awesome. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, so, so there's going to be more homely stuff you can do on ships. Uh, also, all of that stuff will feed into um, when we have the full territory control system, when you have your, uh, your bases that you can build, your skyports, because those will be stationary places where you can customize and build things out and make nice little spaces. Um, so you'll be able to do all of that stuff uh, with, a, with a stationary uh, home-like structure, uh, but not on a, it still won't be on an island, it will be in open sky. We're because, essentially... I mean, you can ground it, but then fly it off again. We're essentially <laughs> saying the ground is lava. Yeah, and, well, yeah. essentially, the thing is that uh, in, in, uh, in the world that Worlds Adrift lives in, the, the land is... A dangerous place uh, for more than one reason. You know, the world's split apart, so it's not. There's no structural integrity. You wouldn't be able to uh, make a new building and uh, be sure that it wouldn't fall down. Uh, so that's the reason why everyone builds everything in the sky. Like you would not get an insurance for the house foundation. No. Um, it's good cool. home home uh, homeowner uh, banter there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Dragonix, Dragonix uh, asks on Twitter, will the Gymnofrusters be craftable or just in chests? Which, by the way, reminds us that we renamed the Gymnofrusters. We did, yeah. Yeah. So there's, a, there's, a, there's two reasons for this. Um, the, the first reason is... Um, well, You're well, dirty minds. It's, it's, you, you guys are sick, sick people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, yeah. it is... Um, in the law, this thing exists called the Gymno Thruster, which is essentially a jetpack. Um, and the thing that I was worried about is that if we were to call the uh, the uh, what do we what is it? It's like an inertia pack that we initially that was our prototype name for it. If we were to change the inertia pack to be called the Gymno Thruster, that means that we can't then make a sick jetpack later that burns people's hands um, in the law, which is great. It's oh, so, so cool. Um, so we can't make that because we already made it and called it something different. And also. The inertia pack doesn't burn anyone because it's. I mean, there's no fire on it. It wasn't the right fit, so we've uh, <laughs> more fire. Yes, so we've come up with a new name for it. The, Can anyone pronounce it? Yes, yeah. the Ephemus Drifter. Th th good. Thank you. Good job. Ephemus. 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 I like the little. R. The, 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 make it a little Spanish. Ephemus. Ephemus. Oh, it's more Latin, I suppose. Ephemus. 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 Uh, is this insulting Somebody to please people, remix cultures? this. <laughs> <laughs> Again, great audio. Yeah, okay, good. It. Uh, but it will be craftable, but the schematic to craft it will be very rare. Um, finding them in chess, uh, you know, on their own will be more common, but also pretty rare. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. It's a very, it's a really exciting item. In fact, um, once it's out, we'd love to see what you guys do with it. Uh, if you guys want to show us some videos, some some DM pictures, some clips. Yeah, just slide on into them DMs. Yeah. And, it's just uh, very like me, all right? I just think that, well, that <laughs> may be true. The, uh, I just think it's such a cool thing. You just flow into the world doing backflips and stuff. Yeah. What yeah. if you could do a backflip, land grav boots onto somebody's ship, and then destroy it? Well, what like if a bomb you could do like that? that? Wait, what you if... can. Oh my goodness. Yeah. How cool is that? That's that so is, cool. That's so this cool. This game is tight. Yeah. I would buy this. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great news. Um, Dirgem Gaming uh, asks on YouTube, please, can you add more creatures and give them a food chain? Well, you want to you take that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so there's, there's, there's two parts to this question. Can you add more creatures? Uh, at the moment, we can't, but we will. We want to remake the creature system, uh, which feeds into number two, the reason why we'd have to remake the creature system, because at the moment they do have a food chain uh, and they... And um, it's a short one. Oh, well, the, the problem is, more than anything, is that because they have a proper food chain and they have like wants and needs, if, if you follow a creature around, they do very specific things. Like, for example, if you ever notice a manta ray with like a sort of pink light on it, that's because he is, he is looking for... Um, Love. He's looking for love, yeah. He's looking to make a manta egg. Have you ever seen one of those little purple eggs around? How do they do that? That's a manta egg. Oh, they, uh, they just, uh, they just, uh, well, you know, uh, birds oh, and, and the bees. Mommy, mommy <laughs> birds manta and, the bees. and yeah. a daddy manta. It's a special kind of cuddle. Um, <laughs> so, um, when is, it, is that what they're doing to my engines? When two mantas... <laughs> yes, they're mating with your <laughs> engine. Yeah, that's it, exactly. So, um, 
we do have a fully simulated ecosystem in the game. Um, that stuff is really delicate, it turns out. And we, we should maybe have learned some lessons from real life because uh, the very start of the game when we put it out, it was a fully simulated ecosystem. So these creatures would uh, you know, be looking for food. If they run out of food, they would die. Uh, and if they all died, there wouldn't be anyone to breed with. So we had this really complicated system for migration so they could find a new place, they could find new, peop new, new creatures, repopulate the world. And then um, the whole world uh, went extinct within two days. Wow. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> That's true. Yeah. All, of the, yeah, all, the, all the creatures died. died yeah. oh so you my played, God. You'd, when you played in the early alphas, people were like, oh, there were loads of creatures at the beginning, and now there aren't any yet, because everyone disrupted our delicate food. ecosystem <laughs> you ate their by chopping trees their down. Children. Yeah, yeah. So um, well, they all died. Um, so that was a big problem we had to address. Did we simulate a mass extinction brought yes, on by exactly. human in interaction? Yes. yes. That's insane. Climate change is real. Um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but, um, but we... Um, I want some nice balance to the science <laughs> bit here. Um, but we, um, so that was our first experiment with that. And since then, we've been sort of having to tweak things here and there to make it less and less simulation-y, um, more and more fake. And at this point now, we have all this stuff that's in there that they're still doing, which is the food chain, it's the mating system, it's all of that stuff, uh, which just actually really, it sort of damages performance now because it doesn't make a difference to the player. Um, it doesn't make a difference to your gameplay. No, You're your gameplay is exactly the same, yeah. whether we have a simple creature system or whether we have a fully simulated ecosystem. Um, <laughs> you but mean now whether it's we basically a, not an ecosystem. You mean whether we have a simple creature system or a lag? <laughs> yeah. Because that's what it's amounted to, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. is that uh, the reason, we're, the real reason we have to redo it to add stuff in is because it's already causing stability issues. Yeah. Um, a moment of silence gonna... for the jellyfish. Oh, yeah. the jellyfish. I love the jellyfish. I mean, they didn't do anything, but they looked cool, didn't they? And that's they wafted. <laughs> that's just like real jellyfish. Just like real jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, real jellyfish sting you sting sometimes. You. Yeah. You really do much. I mean, you, you kind of sting them. Like you have to run it. They're not gonna like seek you out. You know, you just gotta like kick <laughs> them accidentally. Missiles of jellyfish. Yeah. <laughs> I tell, I'm, gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you guys a fun anecdote from a holiday I had when I was a kid. Um, do it. I was swimming in this in the Mediterranean Sea. It was Ooh. a beautiful day, mm -hmm. um, and I was swimming out with my cousin, and I noticed a. Uh, what looked like a pair of swimming goggles floating in the water. So I swam over to it and I was like, oh, someone must have dropped their swimming goggles. Oh, no. Uh, so I picked up the, what I thought was swimming goggles. No, it, was no. a jelly, it was a jellyfish. Yeah. So I was holding a jellyfish. I immediately panicked and dropped it. And then I went underwater to have a look around to see what was around me. And I was in a swarm of jellyfish. Whoa. Hundreds of jellyfish surrounding me. It must yeah. have been beautiful. Did I you was, get hurt? Finding Nemo is a great movie. You know what? <laughs> it's a great film, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was one of those weird things where, because uh, I've been stung by jellyfish a lot of times, and that time I didn't get stung once. What I did Wait. was I panicked and swam as fast as I could uh, back to the shore, and I lay on the beach the rest of the day, um, panting, uh, and my aunt kept telling me I was lazy for not going back in the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's absurd, but just to go back real quick, what do you mean you've been stung by jellyfish loads of times? Well, That's not a normal human thing. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's it stung is? somewhere that had yeah. jellyfish, like the Mediterranean. Like, so, okay, Where so I I'm, grew up in England, uh -huh. there was... Uh, I went swimming all the time. Yes. There was no... There's not that many jellyfish in England. Yeah. <laughs> Mediterranean Sea is a lot warmer. Uh, so I'm... Uh, for, for the folks at home, I'm a quarter Italian. Hey. Hey. That's um, why we're getting it in Italian culture. That's right. I'm very Italian. So um, I what? used to we used to go out to um, when my my mum has a little house out in Italy somewhere. Um, she's Italian. Che cosa? So we would sometimes go there, uh, and when we did that, we'd often go to the lovely beaches nearby, and they often had jellyfish. I would get stung. Ah. Molto bene. <laughs> so you know, That's a few it. Italian words. Si. See. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, that's a fun. Um, so yeah, it's well, a good tangent, right? That is a good tangent. Now everyone knows everything they need to know about me. Uh, yes. Is yes. that is that? Did we answer all of our questions? We did. We, we asked actually every we, question we, we were very been asked. with all our jokes and everything. Yeah. We actually efficiently went through all of our podcast notes. Well done, us. We got to do better next time. We should just have all jokes, no actual information, okay. <laughs> less information. Okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to do, actually, do you, should I do that or do you want to do it, Musto? If you're NPR a very voice. good intro. Come on, NPR yeah. voice. Yeah, go on. <clears throat> Thank you very much for listening to episode number five of Worlds Podcast. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so on worldsadrift.com, on Facebook, facebook.com slash worldsadrift, on Twitter, at worldsadrift, and you can also speak to us there directly. Uh, my Twitter is at fatmo. That's F A T T underscore underscore M O. <laughs> what about you guys? <laughs> um, mine's at lady underscore Jeanette, spelt double T underneath. 
Mine is at Malford underscore. We like our underscores. We do, Love yeah. it. Well, you've got to stick them in there because there's some egg sitting on Malford. <laughs> <laughs> some, some banned egg. <laughs> oh, those eggs. Yeah. <laughs> With that, I have been Master, and she has been... Julia. And he has been... Malford. And we bid you goodbyes until next week. Bye. Many loves. I love you. Bye. Ciao.